What's going on everybody? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is a promised video to some of the viewers of the Revolver Live podcast. Check us out Sundays at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit to enjoy the festivities of a, one of the best shows on the internet. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. Anyway, episode 37 of Revolver Live just wrapped and this was our conspiracy theory episode in which we talked about uh, some of the more popular conspiracy theories, uh, things like the Mandela Effect, um, Sugar, we talked about uh, extraterrestrials. And uh, during one of these segments, I, I alluded to uh, a, something that had happened to me when I was a young child. And of course, I didn't want to delve too deep into it um, at the time, but I had quite a few people come to my Twitter and PM me and ask me to uh, explain the situation that had happened. So during the Revolver Live podcast, uh, during the end of one of our topics, I did mention that another conspiracy theory, or at least one that I believe is that uh, extraterrestrials, what we perceive as aliens are demonic. And it's not just a harebrained decision that I made. I, it's after years and years of research looking into ufologists, ufology, cryptozoology and following some of the, the biggest names in ufology uh, J. Allen Hynek and Jacques Vallée who are like the dynamic duo when it comes to UFO investigation they led a multi-year investigation traveled the world talked to people who would experience what we call close encounters and uh, those are the encounters in which you actually see an extraterrestrial an ET or you uh, you come face to face with them or you experience you experience them in some way shape or form some people uh, say they've been you know taken onto a ship taken up into space some people say that you know they've seen these things walk through their bedroom wall and they're overcome with fear and paralyzed and so J. J. Allen Hynek and Jacques Vallée the Frenchman uh, they did a multi-year uh, investigation into ufology and at the end of their research and doing tons and tons of interviews they came to the realization or at least this is what they this is what they came up with at the end of their investigation. These things are demonic. Yeah. So uh, according to these gentlemen who did, you know, tons of research on, on this field, they stated that extraterrestrials, are, they're always here. These ships are always here. They don't leave. They just become uh, impossible for us to see at some point. And that the scary part of uh, this, this notion is where are they when we don't see them? And so, Something happened to me as a child, which kind of led me down the path of wanting to know about cryptozoology, cryptids, and uh, ufology. And um, something happened to me in my bedroom. And uh, it's not something I talk about very often. Uh, you know, I'm totally fine to tell anyone about it because I really, I'm the kind of guy, I really don't care what people think about me. You know, I know what I think about me. That's what's really important to me. But uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys this story because a lot of people seem interested and in, in, in asked me about it on Twitter. So here it goes. This is a story of this thing that I call the Fruithead Man. Go ahead and laugh now. I can hear it. The Fruithead Man. Uh, I was a child of about four uh, when this creature would come out of my closet. I'd be in my bedroom and directly across from my bed, there was my closet. And uh, it would always come out of the closet when no one was around, there'd be a light that'd come out of the closet, then he'd come walking out. He or she or it or whatever it was. Anyway, I was a young kid. I used to watch this this uh, children's show called Fraggle Rock. It was very similar to the Muppets. And, and to me, these kind of things were at least a possibility. I hadn't had, you know, real serious conversations with my parents on these kind of things at that time, I guess. And so I took it as, you know, face value. There's this thing, this funny looking thing that comes out of my closet and talks to me and asks me questions. And I don't remember the conversations, but I know that we had them. And uh, the reason I called it Fruithead Man is because that's what it told me it was. I told it, you know, uh, that it looked like it had a big melon head <laughs> and I thought its arms and legs and its, bodies were a, a, and its body was a banana. It was really a strange situation. But this thing agreed with me. It told me that I was right. And, uh, and here I am, you know, 34 years <laughs> later talking about it. <laughs> But um, this thing told me I was correct, and it was um, it was made of fruit, and so I, it really became endearing to me then. I'm thinking I'm living a fantasy. This this cool thing with this giant head comes out of my closet and talks to me, and it, we had you know a few conversations 
uh, probably over the course, I would probably surmise to say over a few weeks, this thing would come out, you know, at nighttime or uh, in the daytime, like this particular instance. So this day in particular, it had come out of the closet. I was sitting on our bed. We had a bunk bed. I was on the bottom bunk and my feet were dangling. This thing came walking out of the closet, walked up to me and, uh, you know, I'm sitting there as a kid. Its head was just as high as mine, but it was standing on the ground and uh, we were having a conversation. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, it was going like normal and no one had ever seen this thing. And so this is what kind of really sent my mind, you know, uh, through the, through the ringer, realizing what, what was about to happen and after the after effects of what happened. Anyway, uh, we're talking and over in the corner of the room is the, the door. I'm sitting on a bunk bed at the very bottom of the bunk bed up against the wall. There is like a single seat sofa. It wasn't a chair. It wasn't like this. It was a sofa, old school. Uh, and it was sitting at the bottom of our bed and it was just a single seater. I guess my parents had too much furniture downstairs and you know, sometimes parents repurpose <laughs> stuff for the kids. And so there was a, a single seat sofa at the bottom of the bed. There's a closet directly across from the bed. The door is over here and directly in front of the door is that chair. And so out of nowhere, my older brother walks into the room and he's uh, 17 months older than me. So he walked into the room, he's five and a half a little bit more well-rounded mentally than I was at the time, but he walked into the room and he he stopped. And I'm just a kid smiling, talking to this thing, and my brother walks into the room and he pauses. He comes around the corner, you know, because when you walk into the room, the closet's right there, so there's a wall. You take about four or five steps and then you're actually in the room and there's a, this thing here. And so my brother froze, my older brother, he looked and froze and looked at this thing and it's so funny, I'm looking over actually, you know, acting it out because I remember the situation so clearly. It's funny when things are traumatic happen, uh, you know, sometimes people block them out, but this is one thing that we've talked about consistently for years. And I'm sure small aspects of the story probably have been warped, you know, over the course of over 30 years. But I'm telling you right now, this, the gist of what I'm telling you is exactly what happened. So my brother's standing here, this thing's looking at me, then the thing slowly turns towards Joe. And so it turns and looks at my brother and my brother, when he sees this thing actually move and actually it's alive, he turns immediately. I mean, without a second thought and within a split second, he was going to be going out that door. The door was wide open. At that moment, as my brother started to turn, and this is a scary thing because I'm sure that there are children, you know, in the world who experience these kind of things and parents probably don't believe them. Uh, Joe started to turn and that chair at the bottom of our bed slid past Joe. Right hand to God, right hand on the Bible, I'm telling the truth. <sighs> the, the chair slid past my brother like super fast, it didn't hit him. And as it slid past him, the door closed. And so you gotta keep in mind, we're little kids, it's a sofa, it wasn't a chair, it's a sofa. It slid, boom, and the way that it slid, he jumped up on the, the sofa. And um, at this moment, I'm looking at the door and I can see that we had like a chain lock. You guys have probably seen them before. The old school locks that hang down and you put them across and, and lock the door like that. That thing locked at the top of the door. And so I'm, I'm watching this happen. I'm watching this happen. And at that moment, my brother started screaming. You know, he's bawling out of control. And um, it's funny, you know, in, in black circles, when you say somebody's balling, they're in a the club throwing money. But I learned from my, my wife that balling could actually be crying, too. So my brother was crying hysterically uh, over in this chair. And at that moment, that's when the fear started to actually come over me. I was like, oh, shit, this is not supposed to be here. I've never seen my brother react like this. So I jumped up off the bed and I ran past the fruit head, man, this thing. And I jumped on the sofa with my brother. And he had his head between his knees. He was sitting next to me here. He had his head between his knees. And every time he looked up, this thing was walking towards us. And Joe was screaming. He was screaming for my mom, screaming for my mom. And at this moment, my mom is coming upstairs. She's downstairs. And uh, this thing walked right up on us. I'm telling you now, it was right here, you know. And I don't ever recall seeing his mouth move. You know, I've been questioned by my mom and my dad about this. My dad, he wasn't at home. And actually, fairly recently, I'll tell you that at the end of the story. But uh, my brother was screaming. My mom was coming up the stairs. And so as my mom is coming up the stairs, this thing is looking at me. And it's telling me that everything's going to be okay. And it's like kind of waving at my brother, telling him to calm down like this. 
And I guess it knew my mom was coming up the stairs, so it started backing up, you know, still looking at us backing up around the corner going into the closet. And so I'm sitting there, you know, I got tears streaming down. I'm a kid, I'm following my brother, I'm afraid with him. I see that a little light come out, you know, I see the light hit our bed, so I'm like, okay, it's gone. I knew it was gone. At that moment, my mom is at the door, she tries the knob and she realizes there's a lot of resistance. She's got two small kids in the room that shouldn't be that much resistance. So she's opening the door handle and she pushes the door. I'm only trying to imagine what her perspective would have been to push that door and see that, that sofa there, knowing that more than likely our, you know, these small children can't push something like that. So she saw the sofa and then she said when she looked up and saw that chain locked, that's when she booked downstairs. She ran downstairs and got a knife. And, uh, you know, I actually talked to people who are famous people who've been on like the Discovery Channel about this and stuff before. But she ran upstairs with that knife and she broke that door. She pushed the door hard enough that chain broke. And as she broke the door, Joe, he like spider man around the, the side of the door into her arms. She jumped in our room. She ran over to the window. There was nobody, you know, the window was not touched. She's in our closet, you know, doing this, stabbing clothes and all this crazy stuff, looking under our beds. And that's when she started going hysterical, you know, cause Joe was in the hallway at this point crying and uh, Joe didn't know what it was. And see, I talked to Joe about it now. Joe's still afraid to say what he saw. He's like, I don't want to talk about it. He told my dad, he told my dad, he said, dad, I don't really want to talk about it. Whatever it was in that room, whatever that thing was that turned around, it scared me more than I've ever been afraid in my life. Maybe I'll call him and have him, uh, you know, do a reaction video and, you know, talk to him on the phone, let him explain to you guys what he saw. But anyway, my mom was going off. She wanted to know what, you know, what was going on? How did this happen? Who, who did it? You know, she's double checking, you know, the entryways and making sure nobody's in the house. I'm crying and, and all I could say, you know, my young feeble child like mine, I said, mom, it was a fruit head man. And she's like, what are you talking? I said, it was a fruit head man. It stuck with me for all these years. I've told people this my entire, I, I told my friend Daniel Pope this story in uh, third grade. I told uh, people in middle school. I told Miss Pitts at Reedinger uh, Middle School uh, this story. It, this thing stuck with me uh, my entire life. And, and my dad wasn't at home during this time. And so my mom and dad ended up splitting up. I, I never saw this thing again. Kate and I, we went, when we went to Ohio uh, in 2016, uh, I actually took her to this place. It's 14 Marie Terrace in Akron, Ohio. I took her there and um, I was looking, at, you know, looking up at the window. I'm thinking, yeah, it's been 30 years. I wonder if this thing remembers me. I knocked on the door. Nobody came to the door. Uh, but I took pictures. I should have had these pictures available, but I, it's on a hard drive somewhere. I got a baby screaming in the house. But um, yeah, uh, my dad, he didn't know about this. He just forgot about it. He and my mom ended up splitting up two and a half years, three years later. So, uh, you know. He, he obviously forgot about this situation, but I was talking to him in my old apartment before I got my house and I, I, I mentioned this to him, you know, and Kate, she'd heard this story a thousand times. And so he was looking at me and I was like, you don't remember this? And my, you know, you didn't talk to mom about it? He's like, I, I, I slightly remember something, but I don't remember anything like that. And um, yeah, so he called Joe, he called my older brother and my, my older brother told him and my dad just kind of, you know, did this and just sat there for a while. But yeah, that's what happened to me, um, and it's a it's one of those strange situations that set me on a roller coaster. It kind of it plotted the, my trajectory in life as far as what to believe. Um, whatever these things are, uh, we lived in homes when I was a child that always had something in them, uh, and what I'll call them demons because you know, as a child, you're innocent, you haven't done anything wrong to anyone. This thing in particular didn't didn't terrify me. Uh, but it seemed very interested in me. But when we moved, we moved to a place, uh, uh, 339 Noble off of Copley Road in Akron. And uh, look up these houses, they look scary anyway. But when we moved to Noble, um, there was things that would just be in our room at night. Uh, there was something that came up on the side of the, I was sleeping on the edge, my older brother was a chicken. We shared bed. And there was something that came up right next to me. And you know, you're looking at the floor and you can see the light from the hallway underneath the door. And this thing just came up like literally right here in front of me. And you know, <laughs> I'm a kid terrified. So I'm trying to pinch Joe to wake him up. He's, you know, sleeping. And uh, I grabbed like a coat hanger or something from the wall side of the bed. Cause we were kids, our room wasn't clean. And I swung it through this thing and it just dropped. It just dropped like a cloth. Crazy shit happened to us growing up. And so I'm not the kind of person, I know there are probably people in the comments that are gonna say, this is bullshit. Uh, was it a mass delusion? Anything's possible. That's that's possible. 
but it's also possible that I'm telling you the truth. You know, if you have the kind of mindset where everything's possible but what I'm saying, you're closed-minded because you haven't experienced it. My kids, I just had a little girl. She sleeps with me every night. My daughter's Nova and Nina. My sons, when I was with their mother, all my kids slept with me in the bed until they were old enough to explain situations. I want them to be able to form complete sentences because I knew as a child that these things don't care about your age. I knew as a child that these things would get into your toys and talk to you and stand up and, and turn and look at you while you're in bed. They, they would do these kind of things to us. And so I didn't want my kids to ever go through it. You know, my daughter Nina, she went through something in our apartment probably about two and a half, three years ago where she woke up out of her bed and she came screaming and ran into the living room. She said a man's head came out of the wall and looked at her. And so I went and got the, I got the, the chills in the back of my neck because it, it actually, it bothered me. Uh, but I took the Bible into her her, uh, her room and, and, you know, I said a few verses and, and, and quoted some verses and did some, some scripture and it never came back. But she said that a literal head came out of her wall and looked at her and she was terrified. Now, I know what it's like to be that way. I know what it's like to go through it. Uh, these things stopped happening to me when we got older. Uh, you know, my mom, she's been plagued with this kind of stuff her entire life. You know, my mom's Cherokee Indian. And uh, her entire life, she's been plagued with things, you know, things coming to life in front of her. And, and maybe these things are inherited, who knows? But a lot of people want me to share this story. I'm happy I got a chance to share it. You guys do with it, you do uh, with it what you must. You know, maybe it's just BS. Maybe this guy is mm, maybe slightly crazy. Who knows? I run a laboratory. I'm inhaling chemicals, but th this happened later in life. But I consider myself a pretty straight shooter. Um, you know, I talked to people who told me stories before that seemed unlikely. It seemed virtually impossible, but I'm not them. I, I wasn't in the situation. And the one thing that gives my story to me so much more credence, because when you get older, you question yourself. You question your own sanity as a child, where you just, you know, were you was your mind just, you know, imagining all this. The fact that my older brother remembers everything, my mom remembers that whole situation. It's pretty damn terrifying. I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, I am. And if you're not having a great week, look forward to tomorrow because it's going to be better. Be sure to give a thumbs up, guys. Show support for my channel. Join my Facebook group. I'm not on it very much anymore. I've been working so hard, you know, building my business. But I wanted to get with you guys, let you guys know I'm alive. Share a pretty cool story. Hopefully, get some nice comments. You guys let me know if you've ever experienced anything out of the norm, uh, anything supernatural. Have you ever seen an extraterrestrial? Have you ever seen something weird? at night or in the daytime. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys about it. If you guys prefer these type of videos and me kind of just being candid, candid camera beastly, and uh, telling you some of the situations that happened to us because in this house we ended up moving into, Noble, a lot of things happened to us. Um, we saw a lot of things in that house and uh, it's pretty terrifying, especially my grandma's house too. If you guys like this kind of stuff, I'll definitely do more of it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and checking out the channel. I'll see you guys next time.